Hello everyone, uh, welcome to a new chapter. In this chapter, I'm going to introduce mechanism design. Um, mechanism design has a wide range of applications. Uh, we can apply mechanism design theory in auction theory, uh, matching theory, voting theory, uh, bankruptcy problem, and in fact, any applications of game theory uh, you can think of. Um, I am going to give you the uh, description of the uh, theories, uh, a description of the model, and then some theorems uh, throughout this chapter. Uh, but in this episode, let me try to answer the question, what is mechanism design? Well, I like to think mechanism design as, uh, as an engineering side of economics. Uh, engineers build something, right? So what do we build with mechanism design theory? Uh, we build or design uh, institutions. So that would be probably my first answer, right? So building or designing institutions. Uh, what does that mean? Well, first off, what does institution mean? Institution is a set of rules, regulations that govern the interaction between the participants. All right. So you can think of a market environment as an institution where the standard uh, uh, agents uh, in that institution are consumers and producers or buyers and sellers. Right. Whether the competition is monopolist, uh, oligopolist or perfectly competitive market, doesn't matter. Each is going to uh, specify an institution. You can think of a, a college admission problem. Uh, as an institution where the participants are colleges and students and uh, whether the, uh, the, the admission is done by school optimal deferred acceptance algorithm or uh, college uh, optimal deferred acceptance algorithm or any other algorithm, doesn't matter. All of those algorithms are going to create an institution. If you think of, think of a, a voting environment where, again, the standard participants are the voters, uh, not the uh, candidates usually, but depends on the uh, modeling uh, environment. Uh, so the standard participants are voters and whether you use majority or plurality or board account, doesn't matter. Each voting rule is going to specify a different institution. All right. So. Uh, the second uh, answer would be, uh, with mechanism design theory, we build or again design games, right? I mean, uh, these two things are exactly the uh, same thing, in fact. Uh, so what do we mean? Well, up until this point in game theory, uh, right, you always uh, kind of learned how to solve a game given that you're given a game. Right? We always gave you a game, whether it's an auction game, whether it is a prisoner's dilemma game, a rock, paper, scissors game, whatever. So you, you were always given some game right? with a you know, set of players, set of strategies, payoff functions, and, and so on and so forth. All you were supposed to do or learn is how to solve those games. Uh, by which we mean, I mean, uh, you know, applying the idea of dominant strategy, Nash equilibrium, sub game perfect, Nash equilibrium, Bayesian Nash equilibrium, whatever, uh, whatever the solution concept you learn. Well, but the question is, how do we design those games? And can we design a game? Uh, well, why designing a game is important exercise? Well, think of an auction environment. So let's say the government is going to auction a project which is going to cost uh, the government and the taxpayers billions of dollars, for example. So, and, and they're going to auction this project. Uh, well, you see what I mean? The stakes are very high and so you should take the game, which is auction, very seriously. And so the problem or the question is, what game is actually the best game that we should let those bidders play? Is it the first price auction, second price auction? Is it some other hybrid auction? So it's like what type of game uh, or auction game we should model in this environment so that we achieve the goals 
that we are seeking. So what are the goals? Well, or the objectives? I don't know. Highest uh, revenue, lowest cost, efficiency, whatever. But I, I hope you got the idea. It's like in some situations, designing a game is a very important uh, exercise, which we have never done. And so the mechanism design actually is trying to look at an environment, whether it's an auction environment, whether it's a school choice environment or a matching environment or voting in. So whatever environment you give me, well, then uh, the question is, uh, can I design a game in order to achieve objectives that you gave me? Uh, whether it's fairness or efficiency or revenue maximization, whatever that is. So this is what mechanism design does. All right. Well, another way of looking at mechanism design is uh, what we call normative approach uh, uh, for research. Usually in economics, we look at existing institutions right? And then try to explain how they work, how they lead to some of the outcomes that we observe. Uh, but the question is, is, or the focus is on the existing institutions. So in that sense, mechanism design is a normative approach. We don't just look at the existing um, uh, institutions. We say, well, think of any institution, all right? And then how should a good institution uh, work? or what should be the properties of a good institution in the sense that there are some uh, objectives we would like to achieve. And so what type of institutions are going to give us uh, or sort of what kind of institutions are there uh, that are going to give us our objective? Uh, so in that sense, uh, mechanism design is providing a normative approach. Well, if you remember, I said mechanism design is an engineering side of economics. And I, I don't know, I like this uh, sort of uh, the way of thinking mechanism design as with this uh, diagram. So the mechanism design is kind of a machinery, right? It's a game, right? The participants play a game in this machinery. Uh, we, we basically set the rules, set the strategies, and then let them play the game. Uh, obviously, this play is going to lead to some outcomes. And obviously we need some inputs, right? So we have to stuff this machinery with some inputs. They play the game and then we're going to spill out some outcomes. So what are the inputs? Well, first off, obviously in the mechanism design, we keep uh, the players fixed, all right? So let's say we want those N players play uh, some game, okay? Uh, but what is sort of the input that we need to basically run this machinery? Well, I call it private information. Well, why is that so? Well, the thing is, the designer, the mechanism designer, uh, uh, he is designing this game to achieve certain outcomes. Well, for example, fairness could be an objective. So we want outcome to be fair or efficiency, all right? Or a revenue maximization. So whatever. So you have some objective that you're seeking for the outcomes to satisfy, whether it's fair or fairness or efficiency or whatever, okay? Well, the thing is, if the mechanism designer knew all the information or if the mechanism designer possess all the information uh, like uh, you know the set of players their strategies well the strategies are created by the designer all right so uh, the mechanism designer already knows all that uh, the set of players the mechanism designer also knows that i mean you can restrict hey i'm gonna take n players only and everything else, I'm sorry, you're not participating in this game, right? So the mechanism designer has the control of uh, 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 strategies and, and the number of players. Well, then what is the other important ingredient of game? If you remember, it's the payoff, the incentives of the players. So uh, if we don't know the player's objectives, we don't know how they are going to react 
under certain set of rules, uh, institution. So we need to know, the mechanism designer needs to know uh, the payoffs of the uh, players, participants, so that he can say the outcome is going to be an efficient or fair or revenue maximizing. Well, but usually this information, the payoff is, is a private information, meaning the participants are aware of their payoffs, but the mechanism designer is usually not, right? I mean, think of, again, an auction environment. You as the auctioneer have no idea how much the potential bidders value the object. Uh, do they value, uh, you know, a million dollar, five million dollar, ten million dollar? You don't know that. You may have some estimation, some probability distribution or beliefs about what uh, those valuations might be, but you cannot be certain about who values how much. Well, but the bidders know their valuations, right? They know how badly they want this object or whether they want it or not. So this private information is an important part where the mechanism designer has no control. So therefore, the mechanism designer should control, uh, I'm sorry, should design a machinery where whatever private information you throw into this machinery, the outcome will always be fair or efficient or revenue maximizing. Again, whatever your objective is, whatever the mechanism designer objective is. Okay, so one thing, um, don't forget whether an outcome is fair or efficient. So these are all uh, uh, subjective in the sense that the fairness of an outcome depends on the agent's private information or efficiency of an outcome depends on the, uh, 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 the, the, the participant's private information, right? I mean, think of uh, an, a voting environment where I know we have only two voters and they are going to be choosing one of two candidates. Well, the thing is, if, they, if, if, if the mechanism designer knows that they rank A to B, they both rank A to B, well, then outcome A is in fact an efficient outcome, right? But what if agent one or voter one and voter two, in fact, rank B over A? Well, what if this is the case? Well, then is giving A still efficient? No, it's not. So in this scenario, the efficient outcome is not A, right? So this is not efficient. So therefore, given the private information of the participants, the outcome will probably be different because, uh, the, again, the fairness, efficiency, your, subject, uh, your objective is going to be depending on the private information of the participants, which, again, the mechanism designer has no control. So therefore, mechanism design is looking at mechanisms, the machinery, where they use the private information as an input and they spill out uh, some outputs. And so the question is, what is the best design and machinery where whatever private info or input you plug in, the outcome will always satisfy the objective that you have in your mind, whether it's efficiency or, or fairness or whatever. Okay, so again, this is what mechanism design is briefly. In the next uh, episodes, I'm going to give you some nice examples. Hopefully, they will help you understand, uh, you know, how we approach to those, uh, you know, the mechanism design uh, problem. And then later, I'm going to give you the full description of the model and some theories. Okay.